Well, welcome back to another A Life on Cars video. Thanks for joining. And as you can see, we're back in the workshop today. It's raining outside again. It is the UK though, and it's bank holiday Monday, so that's what we get. Nine times out of ten. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to be looking at this GPS fault today. It's really been getting on my nerves. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll know that the GPS has a habit of losing location. Normally when the car's been stood for a while, a few days, there is no GPS location. And then strangely, it'll suddenly come back on either while you're out driving or a few hours later. So the plan is we're thinking we've got a faulty GPS antenna. So um, I've actually been able to get one from an eBay supplier. Um, less than eight pound, something like uh, I think it came to seven pound forty nine uh, with delivery, and this is the the part here. It has a unusual connector, so this is where the problems might uh, arise when we actually get into the GPS antenna on the jug. We might find that that connector is not the right type. So we'll deal with that when we get there. But the first thing we need to do is get into the GPS system and uh, and start to have a look how the original GPS antenna is connected. So let's get cracking. So on these Jagex Ks, the the GPS is DVD controlled, DVD drive with various other components. So the first thing to do is to take this panel off, which is actually where the battery lives. It's fairly easy. It's just these four screws. That's the uh, the four screws out, and this should just come off and out of the way. Just carefully, don't yank on this too hard because it's only cardboard. Okay, and there you can see the various electronics, the battery, and the GPS module. So. Uh, Let's uh, get this trim out of the way and then get into it. There is a aerial looking connector thing at the front here. But from doing a bit of reading online, I don't think that's the one for the GPS. I think the GPS one is down the back and I've just got a mirror here. And I don't know if you can see, there's, there's another one there, a white one. And then there is a another one, which is like a pinkish looking one down the back. So I think to check this out properly, we need to extract this unit. And there's a number of ways you can do that. There's bolts down into the floor, but there is these little 10 mils here which I think if I take those out and then take the other two out on the other side the uh, the DV unit will come forward and then we can have a proper look at those connectors so let's get these bolts out here I can actually hear the DVD spinning at the moment. So I think I'm just going to eject the disc to stop that happening while we're working on it. The bolts are actually 7mm 
pets if you're interested. I was going to take this connector off out of the way just to get better access to those two there. It's actually still whirring away, even with that discount. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is still whirring. So, uh, I don't know what's spinning or why it's making a noise in the discount. There's one out. Let's get the others out. It's actually easier to get into the side with a ratchet and a little socket on, like this. It's just stopped making a noise, the, uh, the unit. It's almost a shut down. Alright, that's all four of them out. Is there going to be enough slack in here so we can get to those? Connectors now look. You can see that pinkish one, which I believe is the connector that has got the uh, goes to the GPS. Let's see if we can get a better look. So what I've done is I've just unplugged that from the back of the unit by pressing that little tab down and I want to confirm that that's the GPS antenna lead. So I'm just going to slide the unit back in and see if we have lost GPS signal. Right so here's an interesting plot twist. With that pink connector disconnected, which according to research online is the antenna one, the GPS antenna, strangely my system still has me in the right location currently. So I've disconnected that white one there and the GPS is still showing the correct location. So Now that may be for a number of reasons, it could be because the system is relying on a number of inputs or previous inputs so it actually if it knows where you are when the vehicle is switched off then it maintains that position it's a bit of a guess but that's what I'm thinking so by unplugging that pink connector there it doesn't actually confirm that that's the GPS antenna uh, there is another one down there, which I think is the aerial. You can see that um, creamy coloured one. The radio aerial. So the problem I've got now is this connector here. Is the wrong shape for the original input. So, I'm going to need some sort of adapter to make that go into where the pink connector goes. You can see the, the cutouts in the wrong position. These ones are on the left. The two on the left. And on this new one, we've got one bottom left and one top right. Sort of seven o'clock and five pass position so I'm thinking instead of messing around trying to find an adapter if you look on this plug here it does have a little locking tab which you can take out sorry let's just try and get this on the video for you There, that's out. And when that locking tab comes out, you can actually separate these. So what's the problem with me just pushing that back into the back 
of the unit now into the um, socket so I don't think it's going to come out so let's have a look if I can do that okay so you can see what I've done there I've basically removed the blue connector and shoved the GPS the new GPS antenna into the socket and obviously it's not as tight as it would be with the connector on but it's, it's got a hold of it and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I did try taking off the the old one because uh, it's got a similar sort of locking tab but it's slightly different internally the diameter and uh, unfortunately the new one won't come through there so I'll probably just end up putting that back on to the original antenna but the plan is to basically I'm going to put this back in bolt it up and I'm going to leave the the GPS antenna just floating around in the boot for a bit and see how it goes and I mean nothing ventured nothing gained if that fixes the problem then obviously I will find a more permanent place for this it's got a double sided tape on it so I think um, I'll probably end up putting it somewhere behind the the trim in the boot um, but for now yeah the plan is just to bolt this back up and then see what happens right there we are so that's the old one disconnected and uh, I don't know if you can see there the, the, there's the new one I'll just get a screwdriver so you can see that's the new one just going in there it's actually looped it's actually up against the bulkhead so that's going to keep it in place which is handy and it's it's nice and snug in there and uh, turns out the the antenna's magnetic so I've just stuck it on the uh, seatbelt an anchorage there and uh, that's just where it's gonna live for now magnetic while I test it with the excess cable just coiled up there so so yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and we need to test this over a couple of journeys and see see if it gets rid of that intermittent fault that I've got with loss of signal. <clears throat> and I'll keep my fingers crossed because if it does, it's a it's going to be a cheap fix. So let's see how we get on. Well, we've been on a few trips and, uh, well, it's been about five trips, I think, so far, and I've used the sat-nav every time. And, dare I say it, well, I'll say it, I think it's fixed. Um, it's never it's never glitched for the last week or so, um, and it's all, it always knows where I am. So that's a result. I'm um, really pleased with that. Um, looks like it's been a ch really cheap and cheerful fix. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend if you've got an XK and you're having problems with uh, GPS location to just go ahead and get a an antenna. There's, they're available from Amazon, they're available from eBay, they're, they're very cheap. Um, and like I say, you can always change the end or modify the the connector so that it goes into the back of the of the unit and that seems to have done the job so uh, obviously if anything happens in it and I have uh, more problems with it then uh, I'll do another video but um, I'm pretty much going to leave it how it is I'm even going to leave the sensor where it is as well um, I had a look last night and it's not going to interfere with putting the battery cover back on so uh, I popped the battery cover back on last night and buttoned it all down and um, and yeah I'm gonna keep the fingers crossed but um, 
it appears to be uh, behaving itself. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe to Life on Cars and uh, there'll be more projects and videos coming along very soon. Take care now. Bye bye.